It's now time to bring a feature on the show today as we focus on the uh, energy sector in Nigeria. The P Department of Petroleum Resources has warned that the pump price of petrol in the country may rise up to as much as 1,000 naira per litre when petrol subsidy regime comes to an end without an alternative energy source. Now, the DPR stated this just as some oil and gas experts have advocated for a measure from the government that will ensure that Nigerian, Nigerians get a commensurate value from its abundant oil and gas resources like its fellow oil producing nations. The director of the DPR, Sarki Awalu, said this while responding to questions and comments generated by a paper delivered in Lagos recently. He said eliminating it would also require making alternative fuel available to Nigerians and the failure to do so will plunge Nigerians into paying higher petrol prices when the subsidy regime is over. He however stated that alternative fuel regime comes with the initial cost as it will lead to spending almost $400 to convert one vehicle from running on petrol or diesel to running on either liquefied natural gas or compressed natural gas. Mr. Saukia Wiley also maintains that converting 8 million public vehicles currently present in Nigeria to gas part uh, will cumulatively cost about $3.2 billion to achieve this phase. And joining me now to discuss this and much more via Skype, I have Chasson Kwade, Energy Analyst. Good to have you on The Breakfast Show this morning. Good morning, David, and America the Salah to you. Happy celebrations. Now, uh, it's time to just uh, play a little bit of flashback. Now, our previous conversation in terms of the price peg, if we have the subsidy removed, we initially were looking at the price range of about uh, 300 to 500 naira based on the landing cost of petrol as at the time. Now, the fresh conversations we are having or the hints we are having from the DPR is that it might rise as high as 1,000 Naira. Before we delve into the intricacies of this, let me just have your first opinion on this. We are not bearers of bad news, but this is quite a harsh one to take in. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, David. Uh, I think the reality is uh, coming to bear now. If you remember a few months ago, myself and some analysts have uh, come on air that uh, considering the factor that is associated with importation of fuel into this country, uh, possibly by this time or by December, we'll be talking about uh, between 350 and 500. But the agency responsible, which is DPR and the PPRA, are already coming out now that uh, the PIB has actually been signed to law and everybody is seeing the reality. Now, we will be talking about a thousand naira, but uh, the solution some of them are providing is still not what we're saying. How can we be having the raw materials and still be faced with these challenges? It's, it's a bitter truth, considering the fact that uh, our leaders in time past has not shown the political will to do what is needful to make the masses benefit from it. How can you have the raw material that makes things happen and you're still the one suffering out of it? Because... The processing of it has to be done by another people who benefit a lot from it. So it's not it's not disappointing. It's just that uh, he, he has escalated it beyond where we thought of about 500 to 1,000 naira if nothing is done. And uh, uh, I think it's out there for the citizen to now take their feet into their hands. Mm. And Nigeria is a net importer as well as exporter of petroleum products. Talk about petrol or even gas. At the end of the day, like you've rightly mentioned, Nigerians don't have to pay much more for what we have in excess. Now, talking about uh, cost-cutting measures or price controls at this point in time, uh, to do that and remove the subsidy, we need social cushions. How do we also begin to push this narrative on the part of government? And then looking at the conversation around phasing out uh, 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 all dri uh, driven vehicles now looking at gas powered vehicles that transition is not as simple as it seems wouldn't you say yeah uh, the the head of uh, dpr has just uh, so suggested to us an area where you feel maybe is another cash cow area and like you said it's not an easy thing to transit from this uh, petrol stuff to gas it's, it's, it doesn't come easy that way. But what have we been cla 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 clamoring for in the last few years? Let the government have the political will to domesticate some of the things that we need to do 
we have the raw materials. Uh, it will interest you that currently Kuwait is building a refinery. What is an average cost of building this? It's about 15, 16 uh, uh, billion dollars. And if you look at the cost of maintenance that we yield out every year on some of the more ribbon and dilapidated uh, 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 refinery that we have, it's enough to start. You start with one, use that to push those things, considering some of the benefit, economic benefit that setting up this refinery will do. And if the government does not have the political will to do this, can we empower people, individual private sectors who we feel can do just like what Dangote is doing and they feel they need to have a buy-in into it by having certain shares. The fact remains that we cannot afford to continue to uh, uh, have the crude oil, which is the raw material. We are only talking of some of the byproducts, which is petroleum, which is common to everybody. Considering the failure failure in the power sector, everybody have to power their generator 24 hours. People have to power on diesel. These are some of the costs that are attributable to it. And we, are keep, we keep saying it that the best to do to achieve a, a maximum uh, benefit to every citizen is to make sure that we do not push out some of this uh, crude oil to other countries let us refine it let us domesticate things here if we cannot do two at a time if at the entrance of this administration they, they what they promised us to set up a refinery has been achieved after the end of the first tenor by now we we'll have a processing a, 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 a refinery setup that by now will be talking of the second one and other administration will continue to it. The, uh, the suggestion on the path of the DPR uh, telling us that we need to consider that is not what we want. It's not a simple transition but let them do what is needful so that we can be the all even for the West Africa, look at Niger coming up to tell us that they have refinery be beside us here and we have to push crude oil to them to process. As big as we are, we cannot do this. Let the government do what is needful. And now, people will see us. Because I remember then that people call us that we are pessimistic. I received call even from some of these people and say, how can we be saying that? But now it's coming from DPR and it's a bitter pill that we have just have to swallow. But let them do the needful. We have discovered the problem. Let us Willingly, let them have the willingness to set up refinery. We have to push it. This will go a long way to ease the burden that we have on our foreign exchange. We should not be import dependent alone. Let's get some of these things, refined product, given to some of our neighboring countries which they can benefit from. The only solution I feel, I don't want to go too technical, go anywhere, let the government have the political will or empower uh, a private sector just like Dangote is doing, to have like two, three of these. If they want to have a buying into it, they do, so that they can supply the crude oil, which is their main revenue driving area, to mm. some of these people, process and domesticate okay. things. Mm. Thank you very much for your time on The Breakfast Show this morning, Chasson Okwade. It's been a pleasure speaking with you, and we also know what the ripple effect of this increment in terms of petrol will cost, imp increment in terms of food, increment in terms of transportation. The ripple effect is just vast. We need social cushions as we are going to have the subsidy removal also going to take effect. Thank you once again for your time on The Breakfast Show. Thank you, Mr. David.